Wing, who will be our speaker today. And I will also put in now uh, the link where to fill out the feedback form. So at the end of the webinar, or once you have to leave, please make sure to fill out the feedback form. But uh, yes, so very good afternoon to everybody. And I uh, hope you're still safe and sound at home and during the lockdown. Thank you for joining today's iTrain session on how to teach and engage your students online, which will be presented by Wayne Lim, who is a Google certified trainer. So a quick reminder before the start of uh, Wayne's presentation is that to please uh, keep your microphones off. And if you have any questions, it would be preferable if you do ask them in the chat box that is on the right hand side of the screen. And uh, yes, so the webinar will be recorded and shared to you after the, after the presentations. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions to the speaker, write them in the uh, chat box. And uh, yeah, during the webinar also, please do not opt to choose to present now. And you can choose to pin the screen. You should choose to pin the screen of the presentation. At the moment, it is... Uh, my screen that should be pinned and later on it should be Wayne's screen but uh, yes before we start with Wayne's presentation I would like to briefly tell you what more about iTrain so iTrain is supporting digital transformation in Southeast Asia and we are the pioneers and leaders in tech learning and at iTrain we believe in two core principles the power of technology to shape the future and help us build a better world and that love of learning is the source of human ingenuity and well-being. So our goal that is backed by government and academia is to fast track Asian businesses with the latest technology applications and know-how. These are some of the courses that are offered at iTrain, which is artificial intelligence, digital marketing, data science, industry 4.0, mobile app development, fintech, cybersecurity, and many more of which you can learn more on our website which i will be sharing also shortly in the chat box so it would be ideal if uh, everyone who has joined and can hear me can uh, write in the chat box either yes or no or if you have any troubles but yeah please write in the chat box now if uh, if you're able to hear me and see everything clearly so let me continue. Yeah, these are the clients that we have helped to empower um, their digital strategies. And as you can see, they're from many kind of strate strategic sectors and finance, technology, and industry and manufacturing. And at ITRAN, we do think that the future is digital. And we're experiencing that at the moment very well. And so from creative arts to businesses, to fundamental sciences, the future of every field has been revolutionized by the digital industry. And at iTrain, we know that for people to unlock the endless potential, we need to give them the keys that are in digital fluency. So thank you for the attention towards me. And now I will give the floor to Wayne to give you some of the keys to digital fluency. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Liz. And for now, I will present my screen before I start. Just give me a moment. What? All right. I just want to make sure everybody can actually see my screen right. Because uh, just for information today, we're going to talk uh, about teach and engage your students online with G-Suite for Education. And at the same time, I'm going to show you a few tools, okay, um, that you can actually utilize when you're trying to engage your student and teach your student via like online learning. So uh, do make sure you can actually see my screen, okay? And at the same time, please um, feel free to ask any questions under the chat 
section. So if you have any, and um, and feel free to interact with each other as well. Okay. Okay. Wayne, uh, your yeah. voice is not very good today. Sorry? The sound is not very good. Yeah. No. Let's wait for Wayne to update his uh, connection settings. Sorry for the technical difficulties. This is also what you will probably experience with uh, teaching your students online. Have to be patient. All right. Uh, what about now? Can you guys hear me clearly? No, it might be a problem with the microphone. Oh, it might be. Let me just record. What about now? Is it good? Now a lot better, a lot better, yes. That's cool. Okay, that's cool. Okay. All right. So uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. So my name is um, Wayne and myself, I'm a Google certified trainer. And basically my job is to focus on um, helping teachers and students um, to basically um, improve the daily teaching and learning um, and also enhance the process of it, okay? And today, what we're gonna look at is basically to teach and engage your student online with G Suite for Education. And there are three main tools that we're gonna focus on. So which are uh, Google Calendar, Google Classroom, and um, Google Hangouts, so which, uh, it's the tool that you are using right now for this call. So I'm just wondering, may I ask a few questions? So um, how many of you here, like you have never used Google Classroom before? Or for those that who have actually used it before or have been using it and how long have you been using it? So let me check if there is any response. About two weeks. Okay, about a year, about two weeks. Okay, great. You're good, to, good to see a lot of people actually, you are beginner, okay? And which I guess is the main purpose why you guys are actually joining into this session. So, um, Recently, especially during this um, MCO period, um, I believe a lot of you here, you are trying to teach your student online, okay? Because um, you are not allowed to go to the school, you are not allowed to go to university, it doesn't mean that you should stop learning. So basically, uh, we also noticed that the Ministry of Education of Malaysia, they introduced some guidelines on um, online learning and also introduced um, to teachers some of the learning platforms that's available out there. And also, um, I have also noticed like some of teachers, they mentioned that they use Google Classroom a lot, okay, for the online learning. And some of them actually use Zoom to focus on um, guiding those students who are actually weaker in the classroom. And for example, even like one of our partner, MDAC, they are also introducing some of the e-learning solutions for uh, people to actually use during this COVID-19 um, pandemic. So, so I'm pretty sure like all of you here, you. Um, even though you have, some of you here might not have actually used it before, but at least you have heard of some of this too, okay? So what I'm going to show you today is basically to show you how to use these tools effectively for your online learning. So first of all, 
okay if you guys are having a gmail account you can feel free to just open up your google calendar and once you open it up this is what basically what you can see all right so i'm pretty sure you know how to set an event right so you know how to actually uh, set an event and invite your colleague for a meeting so today we're going to use this function to basically set a virtual class to invite your student into your classroom okay and first of all we have to decide a date so today is thursday and we gonna set the class for tomorrow for example so it's going to be the 3rd of April. So we select the date and we just hit on it, type in a the title, okay? Virtual class one, for example. I've actually set the title of my class, virtual class one. And the next step I'm going to do is to add time. So yeah, I'm happy with 1.30. And in this part, okay, I'm going to keep adding guests, all right? Instead of adding guests, I'm going to add a conferencing call link. So which is Google Hangouts Meet link. Okay, this is because I want to allow my students to be able to find a way to join into my classroom. So after setting my uh, Google Hangouts Meet link, so the next thing I'm going to do is to select a class. All right, so a class mean here, Google Classroom. So for those who, who are not using Google Classroom yet, it's okay. You don't have to worry about this part, okay? For those who have already started using Google Classroom, you should be able to see your classes here. So you have to select a class that you would like them to join into your virtual class. So for instance, I've select 2020 English 3A. So, okay, we're pretty much done with the first step here we have already set an event over here as you can see okay and the next step you have to do basically is to copy the link so that uh, you can actually share it with your students so you copy this link and go straight to google classroom all right, so there are a few ways that you can go into your Google Classroom. So the first way is basically just to type classroom.google.com and you'll be directed straight into your Google Classroom, okay? The second way, which is, uh, I find it as easier, is to go to your Google Apps button. All right, click on it and just scroll all the way down until you find your Classroom app. Okay. Okay, I get to see a question here from Grace. Hi, would you be able to share a screen so that we can see the steps? Um, just to confirm, everybody can actually see my screen, right? So Grace, um, you will have to pin your screen. You, you have to pin my screen as a, um, as a screen that you would like to see. Okay. Okay, so we have already opened up our Google Classroom here. So I believe this is something that you can see. You get to see like a few of your classes here and you've got to select a class. You would like to invite them for the virtual class. So um, I would recommend you to use announcement. Okay, because this is the easiest way for you to announce something. Basically, we, we, want some, we want to do something really quick and easy and straightforward. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paste the link here. All right, so here's my link and I'll say, hi everybody. All right, so I have the link, I have the message, and probably I would like to actually attach a video, okay, from YouTube before, so for them to actually watch before they join into the class so that they can just ask me any sort of question when um, they join into my class. So we're gonna search directly from YouTube, for example, uh, We just got to attach like a biology class. Okay. 
I'm just gonna add this video randomly, okay? For example, just for you guys to see. So I attach a video here, um, and I'll like them to watch it before they join into the class so they can watch, and then I just have to hit post. And there you go, it's done, okay? So it's being posted out there on your Google Classroom stream as an announcement. So now student can basically add a comment here if you allow them to add a comment, okay? And they'll be able to watch the video by clicking on it. All right, so this is what they're gonna see. It's gonna be a YouTube video and they get to see the link. So the next step, the next app and also the next step that I'm gonna show you is basically to show you how it's going to look like when your student join into your class. Okay, so when they see this announcement in Google Classroom, okay, they're going to hit on the link. All right, once they hit on the link, this is basically what they're going to see. On the left hand side, they get to see uh, their webcam. Okay, so they get to see their own video. And on the right hand side, they get to see like join now button, present, and so forth. So from here, um, I'm going to explain, have a little bit of explanation, okay, just to make sure that uh, you guys know how to use it. And on the left hand side, I believe you get to see uh, the two buttons here. So on the left side is actually the microphone button. So before we started this session, um, my colleague Liz actually mentioned you should mute your microphone. So here's where you get to mute your microphone before joining into a session. Okay, you just have to hit on this button. Once it turned to red color, your microphone will be turned off. Okay, and let's say you do not want anyone to see your face within the call. So you can just turn off your camera here. Okay, and the camera is off. So once both of them are off, uh, they're gonna turn to red color. Okay, of course, this is not this is not that this is not just all. So we have more settings here for you to see. So we have an option here where you can turn on the captions for your students. So let's say if uh, in some situation they cannot hear you well, okay, you can actually turn on this caption and the caption will try to catch all the words that you are saying in the call and show it as the caption for the video call. All right. And the next thing we're going to see is basically the settings. So I noticed um, in the past few days, I actually read some news saying that some teachers, they complain that the internet uh, bandwidth or the internet speed uh, at their home is actually not uh, good enough to support the online learning. So they find it difficult. They find it like too slow. They find uh, some breaking in the video. So here's where you get to actually adjust your bandwidth when you do not have good internet connection. Okay, so I repeat. So this is the interesting part. So when you do not have um, a good internet connection, this is where you get to adjust your bandwidth. All right. So how you can do it is that we're going to start with um, video okay basically when you switch to your video tab here you get to see uh, three simple settings here so the first one is the camera so if you have multiple cameras connected to your laptop or to your computer basically you will see a few options here but for me um, I've only got like FaceTime uh, HD camera, so which is the built-in camera on my MacBook. So that's why I get to see only one option. So I'll just leave it there. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to adjust the bandwidth because, uh, for example, okay, right now I'm actually using my phone data, okay, to stream the call. So I want to make sure it's not going to burn my data. Is not going to use up all my data so um, i would actually adjust it to standard definition okay which my student will still be able to see me but um it's not it's not going to be as good as hg but it's good enough for me for them to see me okay but here this part you have to take note let's say if you are showing something such as like jamboard 
okay if you're showing something on the screen that you like to draw something you like to write something on the screen i would recommend you to use hd okay provided you have good internet connection so um, the next part is gonna be your receive resolution which is the bandwidth okay you would like to use for receiving the video from your students so let's say um, your lesson actually require require you to see your student or to check their work on the screen they're gonna present their screen to you okay I would recommend you to use HD or else um, standard definition will be enough just to see the face um, or sometimes if your lesson doesn't require you to see anything from your student you can just set as audio only so that you can hear them but you don't see them so at the same time you know you don't burn uh, too much of your bandwidth and you get decent internet connection okay so let's switch back to audio so microphone is basically like uh I would I would actually suggest you to use the built-in microphone because uh, it's always the best case. If you're using like an external microphone, it might cause echo due to like um, the external speaker and also external uh, microphone that you that you you are using. Okay, it might cause the echo. So uh, I would suggest you to use uh, built-in microphone. Okay, like for example, speaker here I have connected my device to a couple of my Bluetooth uh, speaker and earphone so I get to actually switch in, in between them okay so once I'm happy with the setting I just hit done okay now I'm ready to join in the call so before I join into the call you guys might be having a question so what's the difference in between join now and present okay join now and present so by, hit, by hitting on join now button, basically you join into the call without presenting anything, all right? So by hitting the present button, basically you join into the call directly without showing your camera, but presenting your screen, all right? So, so far, do you guys have any questions? All good. Okay, great. So, uh, so yesterday during my session, I got a question from one of my audience. So he was asking me, uh, "Am I able to call to join into this call using my phone call using my phone basically without joining into the video call?" Because he actually saw this button here. Okay, join and use a phone for audio. So the question is yes. Okay, but it's currently not available in Malaysia, okay? Because uh, this feature is being implemented region by region. So right now it's not available in Malaysia yet. But of course, as soon as it's available, you'll be able to join in via a phone call with standard charges applied, okay? So let's say, let's assume that we are joining into a call now, okay? I'm getting my class started. So this is what I'm going to see basically. So I'm going to see um, a few buttons here at the bottom and I get to see the present now button on the bottom right. So basically this button is for you to present your screen. So when you hit on this button, you get to see two options. So the first one is actually to present your entire screen. Okay. The second one is to present a single window. Let's say if you do not want your audiences to see everything on your screen, you get to select a single window that you would like to present. So let me show it to you. So when I hit on a single window, currently I have two different, I have two separate windows open. So I can select one of them to present to my screen. So um, for the rest of the thing on my screen, the audience would not be able to see. All right. So, and here you get to see the more options button. So when you hit on it, okay, you get to see many more settings here. So the first one you get to see record meeting if 
it's actually enabled for your domain. Okay, some of you here, you might not see this button because um, under your Google domain, under your university, under your school, um, it might not be enabled for you guys. So you just have to talk to your um, IT department, your IT manager for them to actually enable this feature for you. Okay, and we're going to talk about this later on. So let's move on to change layout. So here are a few layouts that you get to select. Uh, for the call. So how do you want to see the screen or the video of your audience? Okay, so let's say if they're presenting, you get to select whether it's going to be in sidebar or spotlight, which you're going to see just one screen at one time, or it's going to be in tell. All right. And we have a full screen and turn on captions, which we talk about it settings. Yes, we talk about it as well. Okay, so right now we're going to go back to record a meeting. So this is going to be very useful because when you're running a webinar, when you're running like a virtual class on the internet, not everybody can actually join into your class. Or sometimes you would like to actually record this session to be reused again later on or to be shared to your student as part of a revision. So you can actually hit on the record button, okay? And once you hit on it, you get to see uh, a message like this. So you just have to make sure that uh, your students are aware that you are recording this call, this meeting. So you just have to hit accept, okay? And you will see a message here, recording will start soon. And you will see this loading button over here on the top left, okay? So once the recording is started, it's gonna, it's gonna be in red color. So now it's in red color because it's being recorded. All right, so I get to see a question here. Is it possible to get some notes on how to go about Google Hangout in idea? Sure. Okay, no problem. All right, so right now, um, your virtual class is being recorded. Okay, you get to see like the rate uh, button over here. Okay, it's showing that you are recording your session. So, uh, and while your, your, your class is going on, it's being recorded, everything is being recorded, uh, included like the chat over here on the top right. Okay, anything that people, your audience, your students um, interact here, it's gonna be recorded. And everything that you talk about, the screen, everything is gonna be recorded. So on the top right here, you get to see the number of students and audiences that is currently in your session. And the next button is gonna be the chat, okay? Which I believe you guys is actually using. Okay. And the next thing we're going to see is to stop recording. How are we going to stop recording and where is it going to be saved? Okay, not to worry about this part because once you hit on stop recording, everything will be saved automatically in your Google Drive. Okay, so let's hit on stop recording this meeting. All right, so once I hit on stop recording and you'll be saved in my Google Drive. Okay, not to worry. So your recording will be saved to your Google Drive and you might not be able to see it immediately, especially the longer your class is, okay? The longer time it's gonna take for Google to process your video. So not to worry about it because once, okay, you the video is being recorded and processed, pr processed okay? You're gonna receive a like an email which is gonna look like this, okay? Let me just loading up my Gmail. Okay, you're gonna receive an email like this. Okay, so the top part, let's say if I set a name for a session, it's gonna be the name of the session, all right? and the date and the time and there's your video so you can actually open it in your drive
So let me see. I noticed there are some questions here. Okay, this one is recorded, right? Yes. Um, all of our webinar session are being recorded and you'll be shared with you guys after the session. Okay. So let me go into Drive and show you how it's going to look like. Okay, here in your Drive, you're going to see uh, there is a folder called Meet Recordings. Okay, you just have to double click on it and you're going to see all the video that's being recorded here. And let's say if you have any, you, you have any chat conversation, it's going to be recorded in a Google Docs format. So you're going to see the time, the timeline and the name of your students who are, who were actually interacted in your session. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is basically to attach, to show you how to attach your video into your Google Classroom to share with your students because this is very important. Okay, so instead of using announcement, I'm going to use this feature called material. Okay, I'm going to create um, a material, a learning material, because uh, this is a recorded session. I want them to use it as part of their revision. So I'm going to hit on the classwork tab and then I'm going to hit on the create button and select material. So I just have to hit add from Google Drive and select my video. Let's say this is the one. Okay and click add. So all I have to do is to type in title. Okay, Thursday, check the one. For example, okay, I have, I have the title there and you can insert a description if you want, select a class, let's say, if you like to share the same video to multiple classes, okay, you can select different classes here. And now I've selected four classes. So I'm gonna um, include it into my virtual class topic, okay? And hit post. So now four classes, they get to see the same recorded session um, from my virtual class. So just in case any one of them um, they were not able to join your classes yesterday, okay? They still get to see the entire session. They get to watch it over and over again. So in the future, let's say they would like to um, check on some information that we have mentioned in the call, they can I always go back to the class material and then they can check it out. So uh, whether it's on web base or your student actually have like Google Classroom app, on their phone, they can actually use it. Okay. So can I set not allowed download video? I would like to I would like to prefer that student only can view. Do you mean by like they're not allowed to um, download a video from this part? Okay, so once they hit on the video, so this is gonna be like this. Okay. Okay, however, they'll be able to download it in this case. Okay, to answer your question, King. Okay, they'll be able to download this um, video over here. Okay, because it's being shared in the classroom and um, yeah, they'll be able to download your material. All right. So let's go back to our Google Hangouts. Okay. Um, so, so far, any question from um, Google Hangouts and also recording your session and attaching it into Google Classroom? Do you guys need me to repeat this step? OK. 
Okay. Okay, no more question here. Okay, cool, very cool. And um, I'm gonna show you, okay, the last step is that, which is one of the, I would say the most important step is that you have to, um, you have to actually end a call. Okay, of course the leave call button is over here. So, um, because the reason why I mentioned this, I understand like most of you know where the end call button is, but um, in the past, there are a lot of cases that uh, people tend to forget that um, they forget to actually leave the call because uh, some of the people they assume that uh, they seeing other people leave the call means that the call will actually be ended automatically no in this case no okay as long as you are still in the call and your webcam is still on everybody will be able to see you if they get to access to the same link and join into the call anytime okay until you actually turn it off Okay, so you just have to hit the end call button here and you will see a message leave the you have left the meeting. Okay. How can we how can we receive the homework from students? Okay, from um, that's a very good question. So that's gonna be more related to the Google Classroom. So in order for you to actually receive homework from your student, you have to go to classwork and create an assignment first. Okay, you have to assign them like a task to do, and they'll be able to attach their work and submit it to you under the assignment. All right. So, um, just very quickly, let me show you uh, how can you actually assign an assignment over here. Okay, since that we still have a little bit more of extra time, so I'm gonna just lock in like a bonus section for you. Okay, um, so once you are in your classwork tab, so you're gonna hit on create. Okay, and you can hit on assignment if you want to assign something to your student. And here, here's the interesting part. So you have to make sure that uh, you have some material for your student to refer to. Okay, sometimes, or sometimes you just want them to uh, create their own document. So you don't have to attach anything here. Okay, it's all up to you. So of course you have to set a title. Okay, for example, you are teaching, let's assuming that you are teaching English, okay, we're gonna set a title called essay one, for example. Okay, we're gonna talk about, uh, for example, okay, we're gonna talk about the virus, okay? And we want them to write their opinion about this virus, okay? Um, so what you can do here there are four different sources uh, or four different ways for you to actually attach something to your assignment before you assign it to your students. So you get to attach it from a Google Drive or from a link, or you can upload a file from your computer or attach a video, okay, from directly from YouTube. So in this case, um, some of you might be actually asking me, let's say if I have a video myself, if I recorded a video myself, uh, can I actually upload it uh, and attach it as part of my assignment? The answer is yes, okay? There are a few ways to do so. You can, so the first way is basically you can upload it to your Google Drive and attach it here, okay? Or the second way is basically you can create a YouTube account and upload your video um, to your YouTube account. And let's say if you like to keep it as private, you can set it as unlisted so that only those people that you shared, uh, you have shared your video to, they get to access to your video, okay, but not to the public. So, so let's try to search for a video. And maybe this, okay, I'll just select a video randomly. And the next thing before assi assignments, basically make sure you select the class you like to assign, the points and the due date so that your student is 
aware of the date that they have to submit the assignment, okay, and set a topic for it and create a rubric if you have any rubric, okay, and hit assign, okay. So once you hit assign, every student, they will actually see this assignment. So they'll be able to submit their own copy of the work to you, okay. So, um, so if you are friends here actually asking, um, are you guys able to rewatch this um, session again? Yes, don't worry, okay? Let's say if some of you actually missed up the first part or some part of the video, not to worry, you'll be able to assess to, um, to, assess to this uh, session again on um, our YouTube page and also uh, from our Facebook page, okay? Okay, is there any more session, re sorry, is there any more uh, question regarding this session, like from the beginning, like um, Google Calendar setting up a, setting up an event to uh, going into Hangout call and then attaching your video into your Google Classroom. Is there any more question regarding this? Um, so let me share with you, some of you here, uh, you might be actually, asking me um, so i'm currently using zoom okay and what's the advantages of using google hangouts so so first of all um if you're using google hangouts everything as you can see what i've shown it to you everything is being connected to each other okay you get to assess your recorded session via your google drive and you get to invite your student um, through Google Classroom and everything is just attached, okay, to the same email account. So which is um, your school email account, for example. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. So I noticed a few of you here, uh, you guys are asking about um, like, can we actually show um, some of the steps for, for example, how to create students in Google Classroom and how do we use or create rubrics in Google in Google Classroom. So for your information, um, because that's not the main focus of uh, this session, so um, we're gonna be hosting a lot more session regarding different topics such as Google Classroom. So um, our team will actually share more with you and at the same time, you can feel free to uh, visit our website to check out other webinars as well if you're, in if you're interested to learn more about other stuff, okay? All right, so um, any more questions regarding the session for today? So um, Atira actually asked, why is my Hangout participants um, kept at 10 okay for maximum so um may i know like uh do you mean by only 10 people get to join into a session okay and what sort of uh what sort of email are you using are you using like a personal gmail such as like um atira at gmail.com or you're using like uh a Gmail that's under a single domain, personal Gmail. Okay, that's why. So if you're using a personal Gmail, um, there are a lot of limitation, okay, such as your Hangout participants will be actually kept at 10 for maximum, okay? So if that, which is why I actually more recommend people, institution or educators to use the email address that belongs to the uh, institution or to the school or even to the MOE, 
if any one of you is actually attached to the MOE because um, for um, any domain that is under G Suite for education but is not personal, okay, you're gonna have more flexibility, okay, such as you get um, you get to have as many people um, as you want to have to include into your session. So if I'm not mistaken for a G Suite for education domain, you should have you should be able to actually host about 250 participants in a call. Okay. How many active participants is allowed at the same time as in how many active camera can be shown in a screen at the same time? So it's uh, 25. Okay, it's 25. And in the meanwhile, while everybody is actually asking questions, we would appreciate if you could help us to uh, fill out a feedback form um, to receive uh, this presentation because some of you mentioned you would like to uh, watch this video again, okay? So we can actually share with you and also we we'll appreciate to hear from you like what other sessions you will be actually interested to join and what are the topics that you would like to learn in the future so so that we can uh, we can actually uh, host different sort of session for you guys thanks for feedback and um if there is nothing else is there's no any other questions so uh i guess this we are actually coming to the end of our session today our webinar today and um thanks for actually uh, joining our session. Oh, sorry, uh, I get to see one more question here. Does Hangouts have a feature like whiteboard in um, Zoom? So at this moment, um, Hangouts doesn't have the whiteboard feature, but okay, uh, because uh, Google actually offer like a full suite of everything. Okay, every everything like such as like different apps uh, focus on different function. You can actually use an app called Jamboard. Okay, Jamboard is a rather new application that allows user to actually write something on it and share it with the audience. All right, so that will actually uh, be very similar to the whiteboard that you mentioned. Okay, so that app is called Jamboard. All right, so um, thank you everyone for joining our session today and uh, please uh, please stay safe and also do remember to give us some feedback and if you'd like to know more information in the future, like what are the webinars and what are the sessions that we have, um, please feel free to follow us, follow us on um, Facebook at iTrain page, okay? And also um, do check out our website for more courses um, and thank you very much all stay safe thank you okay and i'll